Yeah, yeah, I see what it is. We gonna hit this and then we gonna we gonna get back to our regular schedule program. We got one for true crimes. Hit that like button, man. Let's get it. There's windows broken out and windows open, and we had locked the house down. So yeah, please don't go in because we don't know if someone's still in there. Just 12 minutes after 57-year-old Nedra Lemke made this 911 call, an officer arrived on scene to find her motionless on the ground and unresponsive, so he hustles back to his squad car to call for backup. This cop would then take a handful of dirt and throw it in one direction and then sprint the opposite way as more bullets started to rain down. Once he finally got to safety, he just waited for more backup to arrive. However, minutes after the exchange of gunfire, that officer started to see thick, dark smoke billowing out from that area, quickly realizing that the farmhouse is now in a blaze. The authorities wouldn't push back onto the property for a while and instead flew a drone over it and spotted two dead bodies and the house burning to the ground. By the time they found Damn. it safe enough to re-enter, Nedra's brother Kevin Anderson, who is suspected of the murders and arson, vanished after the incident and to this day has not been seen since. Welcome back to the dark side of life. In the summer of 2020, Nedra and James Lemke, who went by Jim, had been happily married for over 38 years and lived very fulfilling lives. They were the best of the best, is how people would often describe them. Jim and Nedra would go above and beyond for anybody who needed it, and their actions showed that time and time again. Nedra was one of five children, and her father, Verdal Elmer Anderson, owned a beautiful farmhouse that was located on a nice piece of land in Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. That summer, her father would sadly pass away on Friday the 5th of June in 2020. Before he died, he wrote his will, and in it, he wrote that Nedra would be the personal representative of his estate. What exactly she planned to do with the house and property is unclear, but what's obvious is it did infuriate her older brother Kevin Anderson who was known for being overly temperamental. According to the family, the will did share everything that he left equally, However, when it came to the estate and who would be the executor Brother, of his will, house, Nedra was chosen, and for good reason, meaning she would be in charge of carrying out her father's will as it should and ensuring that any and stipulations and last have. wishes Verdal had would be carried out properly. After learning about this, Kevin was pissed off that his sister was named over him as the representative. He felt he should have been the one that his dad left it up to. Between the remaining family members, it sounds like they all knew that Kevin felt entitled to that property and always expected that his father would leave him in charge of the farmhouse. So when his expectation wasn't met, tensions started to rise in the family. Kevin's been described as a loner who drank heavily and worked mostly odd jobs throughout his life. Along with having a violent temper, Kevin also had a criminal history that dated back over 20 years. In the 90s, he had been convicted of reckless endangerment and firearms violations, apparently stemming from a situation that happened outside of a bar when Kevin and one of his friends walked there and started breaking into cars in the parking lot. When one of those car owners came outside and saw the duo, Kevin, brandishing a handgun, opened fire on them, forcing them to take cover, leading to this felony conviction and him not being allowed to own any firearms, which Damn. we know he would not comply with by later investigations. After the family had a service for Vidal, Nedra knew that she needed to get things in order at her late father's house. The bulk of the following information comes from an article that was posted covering the episode of In Pursuit with John Walsh where he went to Fort Atkinson and closely investigated the story. I will leave <coughs> the link to those articles in the description. 11 Damn, days boy. after her father passed away on the morning of June 16th, Jim and Nedra woke up early that morning and were planning on taking care of some things at the farm later on that day. 
One of the things on that list was finding someone to take care of the lawn before the grass got out of control. At 9.33 a.m. that morning, Nedra would send out a text message Studio, to three contacts the word, in her phone, brother? one of them being Kevin, but I'm not sure who the other two recipients were. The text message that she sent read, Hi everyone, just wanted to put this out to see if anyone wants to take up the task of keeping the farm's grass mowed. Bro, y'all into these? Should I keep doing, should I keep doing these, man, or what? I've been, man, I've been dabbling in this summer. Everything, studio. I ain't even gonna lie, man. This summer, it is getting long. Kevin uh, did not respond audio. to is this message, but investigators good, say good. that he did receive the text. Roughly three hours later, at 12.41 p.m., Nedra made an outgoing call to Kevin's phone that lasted under 60 seconds, leaving a voicemail that said, Hi Kevin, this is Nedra. Say, I have some plans to get the mowing done at the farm, and so I need access into the shed to get the mower. If you could call me back and let me know, we're planning on doing that tonight, so that would be really helpful. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. To my knowledge, this is the last time that Nedra would try calling or texting Kevin that day. Five hours later, Nedra, Jim, and another one of Nedra's brothers named Kirk headed to the farmhouse. Jim and Nedra were riding in the front, Kirk is riding in the back seat, and Kirk is non-verbal due to mental and physical limitations he has. After they arrived at the property to get started, Jim and Nedra hopped out of the vehicle, and Kirk remained in the back seat for the time being. Almost immediately, Nedra starts to notice there's some broken windows on the house, and she is positive that she locked it up the previous night, and knows that someone must have broke in. Not wanting to enter the house without law enforcement, she pulls her phone out and makes that 911 call at exactly 5.48 p.m. There's windows broken out and windows open. Fuck that. And we had locked the I ain't calling down, cops. So I'm going there with to have someone I'm fucking blip, um, ready to rock and roll. Look at this before I walk I mean, into the house. Yeah, please loaded. don't go in because we don't know if someone's still in there. Uh, 12 loaded, minutes boy. after this call was You're received, the first responding officer arrived on scene and started making his way westbound down their driveway and eventually saw Nedra on the ground. Initially, he wasn't sure if she was conscious or not, so he tries talking to her, addressing her a few times, but said he got no reaction and there was no movement from her. Moments later, he saw a trail of blood that was on the ground next to her and he realizes she must have sustained a gunshot wound. The officer draws his gun and moves to the back side of his squad car. As he is standing there relaying information to dispatch, Kevin opens fire on the unsuspecting officer. This officer, who apparently requested to remain anonymous, he said that he could see some of the bullet holes above his head that struck his car. Based yeah, on the boy, position, he figured out that the shooter was in an elevated position oh, looking boy. down at him. Yeah, he was fucking... He was shooting up the top, boy. He was, he was throwing them bitches down range, boy. He was definitely throwing them down range, boy. Five ninety-five. Bro, what you doing, bro? Bro, what Shots you doing? Shots fired at the residence. Shots fired. Bro, get to that AR that's in your car, bro. You got an AR M16 in that car, bro. Get that AR to M16. Shots fired. Screw that P80 Glock, bro. Screw that P80 Glock. Shit. Duck your taco, duck your taco. Bro, you, you running five, away five, from the fire, fire, bro. Upper window. Bro, bro, duck your taco and return fire, bro. Oh, he got hit? Or did he just fall? <coughs> <coughs> he didn't get hit, he just fell. <coughs> bro, why didn't you leave the car, five, bro? Five. I have a female laying down next to the vehicle. One male in the back, not involved. Bro, you should have hosted that P80, bro, and went Subsequent for that. Subsequent to this officer diving mm. into the ditch, he would stay prone and watch over the road with his gun drawn for a bit, 
before right, crawling back right towards to his other officers while radioing in yeah, information. AR, M16 then he started gone, to see thick and dark smoke start billowing out from the farmhouse. Because the authorities had no idea where the shooter was, what he was doing, or what he planned to do, <coughs> they made the decision to not send anybody else back onto the property for the time being until Bro, they put a drone in the air and for? got a better look at the house and its surroundings to understand what was going on before re-entering, saying that their main priority was safety and they didn't want anybody else to get hurt. After flying the drone Damn, over their property, Damn, they were able to locate bro. the body of 57-year-old Nedra, and not far away from her was the body of 59-year-old Jim. The couple was gunned down before officers even made it to the property, and unfortunately, they would be pronounced dead on the scene. Damn. <coughs> See, bro? When authority... That, that's the type of shit right there, bro. Look. A, a situation that was already bad, bro. Her brother made it worse. Because he wasn't the person that was look, I mean, that there was the head person of the wheel. Like, this shit happened so many times, bro. Like, man, I didn't see any family members, bro. Man, I know it was, it was hella bad when my grandmother passed away, bro. That's all I'm going to say, bro. Like, when, when the matriarch, the patriarch of the family, however you want to say it, passes away, man. The dominoes just crumbled, bro. And this dude was hot, bro. He probably was going to do some dirty shit anyways. He probably was going to keep all the shit, bro. He was probably going to keep all the shit. He's finally found it safe enough to go back onto the property. The farmhouse had basically burned to the ground. There wasn't much of it left. And investigators found Kevin Anderson's truck concealed in the barn. So they are certain that he was there, but he didn't die in the fire. They only found the remains of Jim and Nedra on the property. Oh, he got the brother Kirk was still in the backseat of the vehicle. He was unharmed, but probably traumatized by what just unfolded. With the knowledge that Kevin just murdered two innocent people and is now running free, they threw together members, a search bro. team and started to comb through the debris of the fire, as well as the large amount of land and marsh area that is surrounding the farmhouse. Oh, yeah. It was time they want me to do this, huh? Oh. They want to see. They want to see you bigger. They want to see you bigger. The homie says. Where the hell is my my webcam right there? Let me unlock this real quick. The homie says to say they want to see you bigger. They want to see you bigger. There was said to be over 80 go. acres of this property, which Kevin was very familiar with, an area he had spent countless hours in. The police department used a vast amount of resources trying to locate him, including airplanes, drones, canines, cadaver dogs, and trekking a lot of it on foot looking for Kevin, searching tirelessly day after day Man. in hopes that he hadn't made it that far yet. Unfortunately, he never emerged, and he still hasn't. There was only one Shit, dog who hit a on a scent, somewhere. and then he followed that track back into a marshland, where eventually he lost track of it. There haven't been any credible sightings of him since, meaning he has successfully evaded law enforcement for over three years now. He is described as being six feet tall, weighing around 200 pounds, with balding brown hair. Kevin does have a wife who says she hasn't seen him since the night before the shooting when they said goodnight to one another. When she woke up the next morning, she lying. I bet that she lying. Let them get a wiretap. Well, they popo -po and they probably had the feds in on this. So I'm probably pretty sure they tapped their phone and shit. They probably put surveillance on her, watched her where she went. I mean, all type of shit. That nigga went bye bye. He goes. Morning, he was gone, saying that wasn't unusual though, as he normally got up and left early for work. Although she was aware that Kevin was infuriated that he hadn't been given the farmhouse, he had apparently expressed some See? of his anger about the situation to his wife. Authorities believe because he got that text message about mowing the grass, he knew that Jim and Nedro would be showing up to the property at some point <coughs> that day. Knowing this, he decided to conceal his truck in the barn and then lay in wait for the couple to arrive with intentions of murdering them when they did. 
I'm going to show you some specific ways you can use <coughs> Arcade to speed out. up your workflow. I typically like to start out. with chords at... Sister and brother-in-law Jim and Andrew's daughter, Amanda Waterworth, spoke Farmhouse with investigative down. discovery and run. said he she knows this was out of spite, saying, quote, I feel like him burning down the house definitely was a revenge move. Whether it was my parents for something, or whether it was my grandparents for what he felt he had been wronged with, one of my biggest fears is that he will hurt somebody else. According to those who know him, Kevin is an experienced outdoorsman who is more than capable of living off the grid and sur- Bingo. They want to find Kevin. Check this out. They want to find Kevin. They need to go head up, look towards Alaska. You know what I mean? Fairbanks, shit like that. Look up that way, man. He, he probably off the grid, man. He probably ain't even in the lower 48 no more. That ain't probably ghost, bro. He ghosts. He probably ain't even in the lower 48 no more. Surviving. He was an avid hunter and what many would consider a skilled marksman, spending a lot of time in that area in the outdoors of Wisconsin. He has the knowledge, skill set, and motive to be extremely dangerous to society. Even though Kevin wasn't supposed to own firearms, we know that he had access to many of them, and he most likely will not be caught without one. The ATF has offered a $10,000 reward for any information leading to the arrest of Kevin Anderson, and Somebody anyone who sees this man this is urged not to approach him and instead call law enforcement. They've had a number of tips come in, some with similarities, However, none of them have led investigators to the Kevin Anderson, who at this point would be in his mid-60s. A warrant for his arrest has been issued, along with several charges, including two counts of first-degree intentional homicide, one count of attempted first-degree intentional they, homicide, one count of arson of a building, Alaska, and one count of possession Montana, of a firearm so. by a felon. Hopefully, he is caught and brought into custody, so justice can be served for Jim and Nedra Lemke were simply following the wishes of her late father. There's a reason that Verdal relied on his daughter to get it done and do it right, and that's because her and Jim were the most responsible. Before Verdal and his wife passed away, Jim and Nedra would look after them, doing a lot of their paperwork, such as finances and healthcare, proving time and time again that they were dependable. No matter what was going on in their life, they got the important stuff done. So it's no wonder that Verdal leaned on his daughter, who had already consistently been there for him. Like I mentioned, Jim and Nedra were described as being the best of the best, the real deal and the way they live their lives and the amount of people they impacted is really inspiring. Their loved ones never want them to be forgotten. Sometimes when you hear stories like this, you hear, this was the best person ever, and you wonder if that's really true, but in this case, it is. Is what John Ackett had money, to say bro. about Jim and Nedra, and he was the couple's pastor at the faith community. Bro, money, money is the ruler of all evil, bro. Niggas kill niggas over five dollars, bro. You somebody ain't gonna off one of their family members off some family inheritance, bro? You got the farmhouse. I want it. I'm gonna knock you off and I'm gonna get it. Unity Church, which they had been attending since 1991. He knew Jim and Nedra personally for decades and witnessed the impact they made everywhere they went. They were truly dedicated to their faith and spreading the love through positive action. According to John, Jim and Nedra had been teaching Sunday school to the middle schoolers, along with working in the church's youth ministry program for over 20 years, Damn. going on a number of mission trips around the world, making a worldwide difference with their generosity and love. Like I will often good. see the efforts that family members and loved ones take to keep someone's memory alive following their death. I must say, the dedication that Jim and Nedra's family members have to making sure they are never forgotten is absolutely stunning. After they passed, the Lemke Legacy 5K was created in honor of the couple, where people can sign up and compete in the race as a way to remember them and pass on a part of their memory. Jim and Nedra were both avid runners, However, Jim would compete in and finish some insane races. He would partake in many, many races, including the Boston Marathon, but this next one is what blew me away. He was one of the few finishers of the 2016 Gnarly Bandit series, which is a series of five ultra marathon trail races consisting of four different 100 mile races 
plus another 100k, which is the last race being just over 60 miles long. I had to look into this, and he was one of three people to successfully complete this task in the year 2016. That is utterly yeah. impressive. There's no denying that Jim and Nedra were two incredible See, individuals runner, who made an even greater star. team together. Nedra was the great woman behind the great man, is something that I read several times while learning about them. Realistically, I could make this video another hour covering the true impact they had on the world. Just genuine, warm-hearted, giving people that were the ultimate role models. Sounds it's like always it. tragic to see the best people the world has to offer get taken in such a violent way over a decision that ultimately wasn't theirs. They were just being the dependable couple that they've always been. This world was blessed to see two people as beautiful and as caring as Jim and Nedra Lemke, who passed away on June 16th, 2020. May they rest in peace. May they rest in peace. Damn, yeah. That's crazy, bro. Shit like that be crazy, bro. Fucking, that dude killed his peeps, bro. Over inheritance, bro. Like, bro, be grateful for what you got, man. Like, you just gonna go bonkers and just kill, just kill your people? <sighs> Fucking money, man. It's the money, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this one. We're going to end the stream. We're going to come back with something different, man. I appreciate y'all sliding in. Don't go too far, though, because we'll be right back. See y'all in a minute.